That is exciting and complex, but energizing time. We are not a victim. Feminist issues are not just women's issues, but also men's issues. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Encore from India, where we're taking a look at the female artists making their voices heard in a society where men outweigh women, both demographically and politically. Welcome to Delhi, the capital of the world's largest democracy and a land of contradictions when it comes to equality between the sexes. Late Prime Minister Indra Gandhi may have led the way for female politicians in the 1960s, but gender-based violence is a daily reality for millions and women are still fighting significant battles in both their public and private lives. Activism and popular protests have been at the forefront of that fight but arts and culture also have an important role to play. We're here to meet some of the people pushing a feminist agenda through their work. Paramita Vora is a documentary filmmaker and writer. She says she's witnessed a shift in attitudes in recent years. Paramita, how would you describe efforts towards feminism that are happening right now in India? India has a very long history of feminist activism right from the 19th century. The 2012 gang rape uh, in New Delhi definitely became a kind of galvanizing moment, right? Like where many initiatives that had been going for a while coalesced and a lot more popular kind of involvement in feminist work and feminist language began to happen. How do you think arts and culture are contributing to this fight against gender-based violence? India is a country that's, it's a very expressive country. We, we love movies, we love television, and people consume it a lot. The engagement with feminist issues has been expressed through the arts always. And I think that feminist work in India has been so exciting for the last 20 years, and I myself have been part of so many different kinds of art projects as a working artist. Most recently, I was part of this really exciting comic book project called Priya's Shakti. There is a mural that we did along with the comic. It's very close by. Do you want to go and see it? Yeah, sure, let's go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Priya's Shakti is a comic book, art exhibition and outreach program designed to combat the social stigma surrounding rape and acid attacks. The idea was developed by Ram Devineni, who sought out illustrators and writers, as well as the women with stories to tell. They've now become modern-day superheroines. Half a million copies of the comic have been downloaded since it was launched in 2014. <laughs> Hi, namaste. This is Ram Devineni. He's the creator of the Priya character and the Priya Shakti series of comics. So Ram, what prompted this project? Well, this all started with me back in December 2012 when there was a horrible gang rape that happened here on a bus in Delhi. I was involved in those protests and in one of those protests I spoke to a Delhi police officer and he said something that really got me started. He said, no good girl walks home alone at night, implying that she either provoked the rape or that she deserved it. I knew then that this problem of sexual violence, gender violence in India and all over the world was not a legal problem, but a cultural problem. And the only way to really address it is through a cultural context. And for such a pro-female initiative, I do notice that it's a man, yourself, who started the project. Is that ever an issue for you? I've had actually no problems with this. In fact, it's been widely encouraged uh, that this was all started by a group of men because um, at those protests, nearly half the people that were involved in those protests were also men. And the issue of gender violence, sexual violence, and feminist issues are not just women's issues, but also men's issue. And those men have to be actively involved in order to solve these problems. But I also think that it's important for feminist change to happen in a society through new conversations between men and women. You know, not just men saying, we will now uplift women, which has been happening for a long time, but for men and women to work together in different kinds of combinations. And in some senses, to do an art project together becomes like a new kind of conversation to have. And how do you see this comic book changing mentalities? Well, you have to understand these topics are really difficult to talk about. Rape, gang rape, acid attacks. And by putting it in the context of a comic book, which is very approachable, very accessible for young boys, young teenage boys. And that's what we're trying to do, get at the core of the problem by really targeting our audience to teenage boys.
They may be superheroes, but their stories come from real life. Lakshmi survived a brutal acid attack when she was 15. Since then, she's appeared on television, worked as a model, and campaigns against this sort of violence through her charity, Stop Acid Attacks. Lakshmi, tell me, why was it so important for you to get involved with the project Priya's Mirror? There are all sorts of people, children as well as old people, who read and enjoy these comics. So if through this project, taboo subjects like acid attacks can be talked about openly, people will become more aware about what an acid attack is and the problems acid attack survivors face. Lakshmi, you're involved in some very visible campaigns, television, modelling, against violence. How does it feel to see your face on posters? I found the courage to talk about what I'd been through in order to raise awareness and hopefully inspire strength and courage in other survivors. I feel what I did gives others positivity and the confidence to fight back. And it not only helps acid attack survivors, but also rape victims, victims of domestic violence and anyone who experiences violence in any form. How do you see mentalities changing in India when it comes to women's rights? We have our own voice now. When a man commits this kind of crime against a woman, he believes we're fragile and will spend the rest of our lives crying behind locked doors. So it's time to do the opposite. Our faces may have been attacked, but not our hearts. We will continue to fulfill our dreams. Changing mentalities is at the very heart of the fight for equality, and popular culture has not always lent a helping hand, with some feminists pointing the finger at Bollywood. India's homegrown cinema industry tops the charts internationally, with well over a thousand films produced every year. Its cultural reach and influence is tremendous. With strict set pieces, music and romance, Bollywood often presents a cliched version of male-female relations, and its dance routines and skimpy costumes have been criticized for objectifying female bodies. We're heading to a village just south of Delhi to meet one director who's bucking that trend with an alternative vision of contemporary Indian cinema. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to watch Lena's latest film at a screening here for about 40 women. Parch created quite a buzz online in 2016 before its official release because a couple of scenes from the film were leaked on the internet. So it will be interesting to see what these ladies think. <laughs> Set in a rural community, Lena Yadav's third feature film explores gender politics in a patriarchal society. With its four female protagonists, Parch tackles domestic violence, arranged marriage, and taboos surrounding sex, education, and women's desires for emancipation. So, can you identify with the main characters? Yes, definitely. Us women can tolerate so many things. We face adverse situations, and we must have the courage to get through anything. Sometimes women can be soft and vulnerable, but we can also be fighters. Awesome. <laughs> did you learn any lessons from the film? Yes, many things. What did you learn? I learned that girls should also be free to live their lives. Problems in a relationship are not just the girl's fault, and the girls shouldn't have to tolerate the problems. We must go against this mentality. And what are their hopes for the future of women's rights here in India? 
Things have already changed, but some people still believe in age-old traditions. Women today can definitely be successful in the same way as a man. This shows the world that we have strength too. And whatever a man does, a woman can also do. As well as directing Paj, she also wrote the screenplay. For you, what was the most important idea to include in that story? It started off with an idea that was born from women in a village. But when I came back to Bombay and I started writing the script, I realized exactly the same stories were happening around me in Bombay. And then I sent my script out to friends across the world and they wrote back more stories from New York, from Turkey, you know. And I realized that something which is happening in this small little village where there's no information, where there is no television, you know, the resonance of those stories is worldwide. The patriarchal structure of this community is reflected in the way that the elders, who are all men, take major decisions about women's lives. And many of the women accept that, they're complicit. Why do you think that is? Conditioning. You know, this is what has happened for generations. My parents did it, my grandparents did it, so it's absolutely fine. Nobody questions the validity till there is one voice which says, why? And actually nobody has an answer. There's a nod to the incredible reach of Indian cinema with this reference to Bollywood megastar Shah Rukh Khan in your film. They even know him in this isolated community. How do you think cinema influences values or even morality here in India? That's been a question that I think filmmakers have thought about forever. Cinema itself causing change, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to believe it's very powerful, but I think the need for change has to be there and cinema will then take you a step further. Looking back at your career as a filmmaker so far, do you think you faced any specific challenges as a woman in this industry? We're not doing too bad as far as women directors are concerned. We're not really badly off in India. The statistics are worse in lots of other countries where you don't expect it to be bad. And uh, personally, I started off as an editor where I did face a lot of discrimination. After that, I stopped even acknowledging it if it happened around me. So I've stopped looking at those signs of, I just do what I need to do and uh, thankfully I've got to do whatever I wanted to do. <laughs> Coming up in part two, we head to Mumbai, India's economic and cultural capital, where I take a stroll with feminist comedian Radhika Vaz, and activist group Why Loiter explain how culture is key to claiming back public space for women.